question. Are you intrigued by the complexity of the tech world? Well, at the roots of this tech world, the two components that constitute every technology are software and hardware. And these require vigorous development through a tested and approved cycle of processes. Hello everyone and welcome to this video by Intellipart. In this video, I will discuss the software development life cycle. But before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for regular updates. Now let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we will see what is meant by software. Then, we will see what is SDLC. Then, the need of SDLC. Then, we will move on to the steps involved. That is, we will discuss the SDLC life cycle and the phases. Then, we will see what models can be used for SDLC. And lastly, a conclusion. Now, let's see our first agenda. That is, what is meant by software. Software is a collection of instructions, data or computer programs that are used to run machines and carry out particular activities. It is the antithesis of hardware, which refers to a computer's external component. A device's running programs, scripts and applications are collectively referred to as software in this context. Next we will see what is SDLC. Well, SDLC stands for Software Development Life Cycle. It outlines the numerous steps needed in creating software to produce a high-quality end product. The stages of the SDLC encompass the entire life cycle of a piece of software, from conception to retirement. Following the SDLC process results in the software being developed in a controlled manner. Next, we will see the need of SDLC. The development team must choose a life cycle model that is appropriate for a specific strategy and then adhere to it. The creation of a software product would not be systematic and disciplined without the use of a precise life cycle model. There needs to be agreement among team members regarding when and what to do when producing a software product. If not, it would be an indication of disorder and project failure. The criteria for entering and leaving each phase are described in a software life cycle model. Only if the stage entry requirements have been met can a phase start. Therefore, it is impossible to detect the entry and exit criteria for a stage without a software lifecycle model. It becomes difficult for software project managers to keep track of the project's development without software lifecycle models. Now let's take a look at the development steps involved. Firstly, we have planning and requirement analysis. Then we have specifying the needs, following which we have creating or designing the software, then project development, testing, deployment, and maintenance. Let's have a brief description about each of these stages. And this is the cycle that the SDLC follows. So about stage one, the level of SDLC that is most crucial and essential is requirement analysis. With input from all the stakeholders, domain experts, and SMEs in the industry, the senior team members carry it out. At this point, planning is also done for the requirements for quality assurance and for the identification of project related risks. So a meeting is scheduled with the client by the business analyst and project manager to obtain all the necessary information such as what the customer wants to construct, who will be the end user and what the product's goal is. A fundamental knowledge of understanding of the product is crucial before constructing it. For example, a client requests a financial transaction related application. This approach requires specific requirements, such as what operations will be performed, how they will be performed, in what currency they will be performed, etc. Once the necessary task has been completed, the analysis of the viability of a product's growth is finished. There is a signal set up for additional discussion in the event of any ambiguity. The SRS, that is, Software Requirement Specification document, is prepared once the requirement has been comprehended. This document should be carefully followed by the developers and should also be reviewed by the client for future reference. Next, we have specifying the needs. The process of representing, documenting and getting the project stakeholders to approve the software requirements follows the completion of the requirement analysis. This is done by using the SRS document, which contains all the product requirements that must be created and developed during the project lifecycle. Stage 3 is creating or designing the software. The knowledge of the software project's needs, analysis and design will all be revealed in the upcoming phase. This phase is the result of the previous two such as requirement analysis and client input. Stage 4 is project development. 
The actual development phase of the SDLC starts here and programming is created. Coding represents the start of design implementation. Programming tools including compilers, interpreters, debuggers and other similar tools are used to generate and implement the code and developers must adhere to the coding standards outlined by the management. Stage 5 is called testing. Following the generation of the code, it is compared to the requirements to ensure that the solutions are satisfying the demands identified and acquired during the requirement stage. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptability testing are carried out at this level. Stage 6 is deployment. When the software has been certified and no defects or mistakes have been reported, it is put into use. The software may then be delivered as is or with proposed improvements in the object portion depending on the assessment. The maintenance of the software starts once it has been deployed. Stage 7 is maintenance. When the customer begins utilizing the technologies that have been designed, the true problems and ongoing needs become apparent. Maintenance is the process when the developed product is given attention. Next, we'll talk about the SDLC models. Namely, there are seven. And first one is waterfall model. Then we have V-shaped, prototype, spiral, iterative incremental, big bang, and lastly, the agile model. Let's have a brief description about all of these models. The first model utilized in the SDLC is the waterfall model. It is also known as linear sequential model. The results of one phase in this model serve as the input for the following phase. Only after the preceding phase is finished developing can the new phase begin. Let's take a look at the cycle itself. First, requirements are gathered and analyzed. Only once the requirements have been set in stone can system design begin. The SRS document produced in this case serves as both an input and an output for system design phase. Then documents that serves as an input from the following phase, implementation and coding are prepared throughout the system design and software architecture phases. Then coding is completed in the implementation phase and the software created serves as the input for the testing step that follows. The developed code is rigorously tested throughout the testing process to find any software flaws. When a fault is repaired, it is retested and entered into the defect tracking tool. Bug logging, retesting and regression testing continues until the software is ready for use. Following the customer's approval, the developed code is put into production during the deployment phase. The developers are responsible for fixing any problem that arise in the production environment and fall under maintenance. Now, advantages and disadvantages. The waterfall paradigm is an understandably straightforward one in which all steps are carried out sequentially. Each phase's deliverables are well specified which prevents complexity and makes the project simple to manage. Now disadvantages. The waterfall approach requires a lot of time and cannot be utilized for projects with a short lifespan because a new phase cannot be started until the current phase is finished. This model expects the requirement to be clear in the requirement analysis phase itself and any change in the later stages would result in higher costs as the changes would be required in all the phases. As a result, it cannot be used for projects with uncertain requirements or where the requirements keep changing. Next, we'll talk about the V-shaped model. Verification and validation model is another name for this specific model. In this methodology, development and testing go concurrently and verification and validation go hand in hand. The only difference between the V model and the waterfall model is that in the V model, Testing and test planning begin earlier. Let's take a look at the cycle. In this model, we have two phases, that is the verification phase and the validation phase. Under verification phase, we have requirement analysis, that is, all necessary data is acquired and analyzed in this step. Examining the specifications is one of the verification activities. Then we have system design. Once the requirements are defined, a system is designed or the product's architecture and its components are made and recorded in a design document. Then we have high-level design. The architecture and design of modules are specified by high-level design. It specifies how the two modules work together. Then we have low-level design. The individual component architecture and design are described by low-level design. Lastly, in this phase, we have coding. 
In this phase, code development is completed. In the validation phase, firstly we have unit testing. Utilizing the unit testing cases created during the low-level design phase, unit testing is carried out. In-house unit testing is done by the developer. It is carried out on individual components which helps find effects quickly. Then we have integration testing. During the high-level design phase, integration testing is carried out utilizing integration test cases. The testing carried out on integrated modules is known as integration testing. Next up we have system testing. During the system design phase, system testing is carried out. This step involves testing the entire system including every aspect of its functionality. Lastly we have acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is carried out in the customer's environment and is connected to the requirement analysis process. Now we have advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, it is a straightforward and simple model. Smaller projects with stated requirements that freeze in the early stages benefit from the V-model approach. It is a disciplined approach that yields a high quality end product. For disadvantages, for ongoing projects, a V-shaped model is not recommended. Later requirement changes would be prohibitively expensive. Now we'll talk about prototype model. The prototype model is a model in which the software prototype is created first. Comparing prototype models to the actual software reveals that they perform poorly and have limited functional capabilities. Prototypes are built with dummy functionalities. This is a useful tool for figuring out what the customer actually wants. Let's take a look at the cycle. To obtain useful user feedback, software prototypes are created before the final product. After taking into account user feedback, the prototype is once more examined by the client. Up until the consumer accepts the model, this process continues. After gathering requirements, a rapid design is made and a prototype is developed before being delivered to the customer for review. The prototype is modified in response to client comments and the clarified requirement, then represented to the client for review. The customer must accept the prototype before the genuine program can be developed. The waterfall model approach is used to construct the actual software. Now let's see the advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, because flaws are discovered considerably earlier during prototype models, developed costs and time are reduced. A change in requirement, a missing feature, or a lack of functionality can all be found during the assessment process and added to the finalized prototype. A customer's involvement from the beginning clears up any misunderstandings about the functionality's requirements. And for the disadvantage, the customer can alter the requirements for the finished product because they are involved in every stage of the process, which makes the scope more difficult and could extend the time it takes to deliver the product. Next we will talk about the spiral model. Iterative and prototype approaches are part of the spiral model. The iterations adhere to the stages of the spiral model. The innermost loop in the model is for requirement collecting and analysis, which is followed by planning, risk analysis, development, and evaluation. The loops in the model represent the phases of the SDLC process. Designing is the second loop followed by implementation and testing. Now there are four phases in this model. Let's take a look at the cycle. We have planning, risk analysis, engineering, and evaluation. Firstly, planning. Gathering requirements is a part of the planning step during which the customer is asked for all the necessary information and it is recorded. The following phase begins with the creation of software requirement specification document. Then comes risk analysis. The best solution is chosen for the risks involved in this phase and analysis is completed by creating the prototype. As an illustration, there is a chance that the data access rate from a remote database will be excessively slow. Building a prototype of the data access subsystem will eliminate the risk. Then we have engineering. Coding and testing are completed after the risk analysis is done. And lastly, we have evaluation. The customer assesses the system created and makes plans for the following iteration. Let's talk advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, the prototype models are extensively used for risk analysis. And the following iteration can include any functionality changes or improvements. And for disadvantages, only huge projects are the greatest candidates for the spiral model. And as it may require numerous iterations and take a long time to produce the desired result, 
the cost may be substantial. Next, we will talk about the iterative incremental model. The product is divided into manageable pieces by the iterative incremental model. For instance, a feature that will be created during the iteration is chosen and put into practice. Phases such as requirement, analysis, design, coding and testing are completed throughout each iteration. Iterations do not require extensive force. Let's take a look at the cycle. After each iteration is finished, a product is confirmed and sent to the client for review and feedback. The newly incorporated feature is combined with customer feedback in the following iteration. As a result, the product gains features as iterations go and the final build has all of the product's features. Now there are four phases in this model called inception, elaboration, construction and transition. In inception phase, the project's requirements and scopes are included. In elaboration phase, a product's working architecture which addresses the risks noted during the inception phase and also satisfies the non-functional criteria. During construction phase, the construction phase includes of the following. The architecture is filled out with deployable code during the construction phase, which is accomplished through functional requirement analysis, design, implementation and testing. Then comes the transition phase. The product is introduced into the production environment during the transition phase. Now advantages and disadvantages. Any change in the requirement can be easily done and would not cost as there is a scope of incorporating the new requirement in the next iteration. Risk is analyzed and identified in the iterations. Defects are detected at an early stage. As the product is divided into smaller chunks, it is easy to manage the product. Now disadvantages. To break down and develop progressively, a complete grasp of a product is necessary. Now we'll talk about the Big Bang model. The Big Bang model has no established process. Input and output consist of money and labor, and the result is a developed good that may or may not be what the client requires. Let's take a look at the cycle. Big Bang model doesn't need a lot of schedule or planning. The developer analyzes the requirements, writes the code, and creates the product in accordance with his knowledge. This model is only applied to modest projects. The absence of a testing team and the absence of formal testing could lead to the project's failure. Now, advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, it is an extremely basic model. There is less need for scheduling and planning. The developer has the freedom to create their own software. Now, for the disadvantage, large, ongoing and sophisticated projects cannot be handled with Big Bang model and it is highly uncertain and dangerous. Lastly, we have the Agile model. The incremental and iterative models are combined to create the Agile paradigm. This paradigm emphasizes flexibility throughout product development more so than requirements. A product is divided into manageable incremental builds in Agile. It is not created in its entirety in one sitting. The number of features increases with each build. The upcoming update expands upon earlier features. Let's take a look at the cycle. Sprints are the term used for iterations in Agile. A sprint lasts about two to four weeks. Each sprint ends with the product owner verifying it before it is provisioned to the client with his or her permission. Customer feedback is used to make improvements and the following sprint will focus on his recommendations and enhancements. Now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages. For advantages, it gives you more freedom to adjust to the changes. The new feature is simple to add. Customer satisfaction because consider the comments and recommendations at every level. And for disadvantages, there's inadequate documentation. Agile requires highly qualified and experienced personnel. The project would fail if the customer was unsure of exactly how they wanted the final result to be. Now we have come to the conclusion, for the project to be successfully finished, adherence to an appropriate life cycle is crucial. In turn, this facilitates management. Each model of the software development life cycle has pros and cons of its own. The elements like requirement, system complexity, project size, cost, skill limitation, etc. can help establish the optimal model for any project. Spiral and Agile models, for instance, 
are the best to utilize when a requirement is uncertain because the necessary adjustment may be easily accommodated at any stage. And that's it for this video. Thank you. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in software engineering, then IntelliPad provides an advanced certification program on software engineering and application development by ENICT Council of IIT Guwahati. And it is taught by IIT Guwahati professors and industry experts. This course is designed to upskill and land your dream job.